You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a fun filled, succinct episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And this is episode number 626. Always love succinct. I think the listeners love succinct. We love that you're hanging out with us today. Really appreciate it. And uh, I think this question is going to be um, interesting to a lot of people. Let's just jump right into it because, guys, we're going to be talking today about National Forest Service. And a lot of people have been saying things even on the National Forest website. There's some some pretty bad information, actually. Um, and we've got a memo here from... Thomas L. Tidwell, the chief of the National Forest Service, concerning commercial filming and photography permits. If you're looking for this document, it's file code 2720. Sweet. Hello, my name is Phil. I'm studying for my 107 for search and rescue. I was currently in a national forest area and noticed a no drone sign. My question is, as a hobby pilot, What are the rules in flying in a national forest area, not a national park, a national forest area? Thanks, guys. Hey, Phil. Um, Good luck on the test, by the way. Hope that you nail that sucker. Mm -hmm. Um, National forest, not a national park, because I think everybody's pretty clear on the national park stance. Yeah. But there is a difference, right? Yes. And again, if you are trying to fly in a national park... Um, You can fly in a national park as long as you're operating from outside of the national park. That is the kicker. That is the caveat. That is the thing that will save your butt. We've had multiple people use the Drone U field kit and defend themselves against National Park Service rangers. But guys, rangers, I mean, I I would say uh, for those of you who like the drone rule because you don't like drones, you know, one thing to really understand uh, for all the national park rangers out there is, guys, we, we just love to fly. I mean, it, we're not trying to cause trouble. Most of us are responsible. And, um, you know, also I would look into the law about the supremacy clause. Um, I think that's really important. Um, but I think it's also really important to understand the difference between a regulation and a law. And that's all I got to say. Anyway, <laughs> so so look that up. Yeah, so uh, Google that. Um, because when National Park Service put out their 2014 rule, um, it was a, a, a regulation. There was no law behind it. So um, hopefully someone challenges it. John Taylor, maybe you're, that's your next thing here. Who knows? Um, but anyway, uh, we've got this document here from the National Forest Service, and this is actually in the Drone Pilot Field Kit. Uh, Vic Moss got this document for us. Thank you very much, Vic. Um, Vic Moss is one of the instructors here at DroneU and now part of the executive board. So um, this document says, to further help differentiate between journalism and other activities, the following question should be asked. Is the primary purpose of filming activity to inform the public or is it to sell a product for a profit? If the primary purpose is to inform the public, then no permit is required and no fees assessed. I also want to emphasize that commercial photography only requires a permit if the photography takes place at locations where members Members of the public are not allowed or uses models, sets, or props. Commercial film and photography permit fees should be primarily viewed as land use fees. If the activity presents no more impact on the land than that of the general public, then it shall be exempt from permit requirements. Now, this is, seems very clear to me. If the activity presents no more impact on the land than that of the general public, well, I'm going to be using the air. Um, mm-hmm. So, And guys, another thing too, if you are flying a National Forest Service and there is a fire, the NFS has been very, very good about getting temporary flight restrictions out around fires. You cannot fly around fires, okay? Even... Um, most recently, there was a fire here in New Mexico. 
and they've been, you know, the NFS has been really reporting drones in just about every press release when it comes to fires, whether that's um, a true or mm-hmm. whether that's just um, uh, an attempt to put more data out there saying that drones are a problem. So the government well, has more data based, quote unquote, evidence, but they're but, unsubstantiated claims. Well, but on that note, as I understand it, at least in one case, they actually had to stop the operation, get the planes out of the air that were dropping the, the chemicals to stop mm-hmm. the fire because of potential drone sightings. So True. And I know it's very that, practical. It is. And and guys, for those of you who are who are fighting fires, we understand that drones are, are definitely a problem in, in many fires, but not all of them. And that's what I'm trying to say is that we have noticed in research that there has been a clear shift in press releases from the NFS about fires. The press releases used to say, here's the fire, here's the containment, here's how much acreage it is. Now every single press release says, here's the fire, here's the containment, have we seen a drone yet? Did it stop service? Right. So like that, those two data points are now in each press release. Um, That's just something that I've noticed empirically. So again, I'm going to say this one more time. Um, I also want to emphasize that commercial photography only requires a permit if the photography takes place at locations where members of the public are not allowed or uses models, sets, or props. Commercial film and photography permit fees should be primarily viewed as land use fees. If the activity presents no more impact on the land than that of the general public, then it shall be exempt from permit requirements. We have planned a series of public sessions to gain input on the proposed directive to ensure that we understand all concerns. Um, I ask you to help us through your contacts to share and discuss with the public and the media the intent of the proposed directive and the circumstances where a permit is not required. The agency will fully and carefully address comments from journalists and all other public comments in developing. Now, there's something I want to say here because he keeps mentioning mentioning journalists. I have spoken with agency leadership, members of the national press, leadership from the Society of Environmental Journalists and the Outdoor Writers Association of America, And I want to ensure that my intent is clear on all levels of this agency. News coverage on NFS lands is protected by the Constitution and our responsibility to safeguard the right on the lands that we manage for all Americans. Journalists provide a critical public service, and this agency will ensure that their access in the pursuit of that public service. Journalism is not to be considered a commercial activity for the purpose of the regulations of our permit policies on NFS lands. Journalism includes... But it's not limited to breaking news, B-roll, featured news, huh. news documentaries, long form pieces, background shots, blogs, any other act that could be considered related to news gathering. All of which could be for profit. True. I just find that interesting. That it, news is always for profit. Yeah. Let's so be honest here. They're not breaking news. The Today Show has only talked about the same freaking things for the last six months. Trump, Russia, we're mad. That's it. (laughs) No, absolutely. Because it sells. They're selling ads. That's why. What's fascinating is just the disparity between governmental agencies in their approach to drones. I think this is a perfect example of why Feinstein's federalism bill wouldn't work. Because we already have this issue where everyone and their mother is trying to create this new regulation and law to say, you know what, this is our take on the issue. And it's like, you don't get a take on the issue. There's the federal law, and then there's not. Just because you can write a regulation doesn't mean it has the legal authority. We've already seen this happen in the federal government. They've tried to say, look, you have to register this thing. And registration is going to be the way that we can enforce against bad, illegal drone actors. No enforcement actions ever happened, we found out from the FOIA, and registration uh, was illegal. So, guys, I, I just, I, you know, I know the, I know Congress listens to this, I know heads of the FAA listen to this, and I think it is so important that we have a succinct stance on uh, where you can fly, where you can't fly. I would love to see the FAA in the future have a resources page and just say, like, NFS, national parks, but also be 100% honest. I don't mm-hmm. want the government BS explanation of national parks. You cannot fly a drone in national parks. That's not true. You cannot take off or land or operate from a national park, but you can take off from outside the national park and operate from outside of the national park and fly in it. There's well, nothing wrong with that. And you're always going to have this sort of rogue enforcement officers, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, I had a dude come up to me with a a bungee knife that looked like he was Crocodile Dundee, and he looked really (laughs) mean, and I was really scared. This guy's in Lake Powell's. Uh, I was really scared, but he knew the loophole. 
he was like, you're so lucky you're on Navajo land right now. And I'm like, I'm not lucky. This is America, homie. Like I'm doing this cause I want to. Yeah. So you, why don't you put on these goggles and have some fun with me and like take a load off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously. <laughs> Time for a conversion. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, um, it, it is, it is interesting. And you're, you're just going to run in and even in the, in the national forest. And, and that was pretty clear that there's a lot of freedom to fly there. You're probably still going to run into agents who are going to tell you that you can't. Which is why the Drone Pilot Field Kit is so important. If you need one, go to dronepilotfieldkit.com, print one out, put it in a binder. Sorry, I don't have some fancy binders yet. I'm talking to Sarah about doing that, but they're expensive. They don't need it. You're going to want it electronically anyways. Yeah, honestly, for me, I don't want it electronically. I'm working on a personal binder myself because I want to be able to flip to pages really quick and be like, shut your mouth, shut your mouth shut your mouth. So yeah, that could be, if it were me, I'd <laughs> I'm want not going to say that to a police officer. I'm giving you the yeah. Paul raw version. Now I would actually be like, well, Mr. Officer, if you'd like to take a look at page 624 over here on uh, paragraph five, section A, like, yeah, so. either way, whether you want it in a hard copy or cause you can always download it and then print it out. Right. Yeah, so true. you can take care of that yourself. But I think a lot of folks would prefer to have it electronically. Yeah. And by the way, I also think it's really important to discuss how you speak to enforcement officers because everyone mm. deserves respect. And in order to garnish respect, you must give respect. Yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that. And compassion. I hope for everybody listening that goes without saying, but nonetheless, it's, it's good to be reminded. And compassion breeds compassion. If you have an angry cop and you're not smart enough to turn it around on him and help him understand rationally what's going on, you need to work on your communication skills because that is going to be very, very important. In fact, we should still have that uh, officer from Chicago come we on should. the show We'd and talk about, him. you know, how when, when an officer comes up to you, you know, w- what to do, because I'm not going to lie, all the stuff I see on TV, it, it makes me afraid of police and I shouldn't be. They're just another human being who is actually going above and beyond yeah. to like, you know, put themselves out there to protect other people when in all honesty, they shouldn't be. They get paid crap. And it's like, you know what? I, I feel bad for you guys. The news plays one role with the public. And you know what? Not every cop is perfect. OK, I realize that there are cops that don't have the best intentions and they're afraid and they mm-hmm. make poor decisions when they're fearful. We're humans. Right. We're humans. So um, and I and y- since we are humans, give each other the benefit of the doubt Indeed. oftentimes even when i get pulled over i have to like calm myself down like paul it's okay breathe okay absolutely i mean i've always had an issue with authority right <laughs> but when it comes to certain circumstances i get over it yeah and and show the respect i always get required. nervous for no reason like literally i just start getting nervous for no reason and like and that's ever since i got Um, pulled over in Texas by this really angry cop, which since then has apologized to me, but it's still like, I still have some like PTSD about how the whole thing went down and speeding ticket, like literally the most intense speeding ticket ever. (laughs) 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 And and, and you know, that brings up a good point because who knows what had happened to him that day? Yeah. Who knows? I like to think of those situations and think about what kind of news did that person just receive? For example, did they find out somebody they love has cancer. I mean, you just never know what's leading to somebody's behavior, but when you give the benefit of the doubt, like you're referring to, and you treat people with respect, Mm -hmm. most likely they're going to come around and come around quickly, and then you can work through whatever you need to work through. And I think another thing to say that really is important is that I'm not very good at this. I'm working on this. This is not, I'm not perfect and nowhere close to it, but my goal is to just be self-reflective and try to grow and try to be better. And the only way to do that is through habits. And it's not easy, but you know what? You got to do it. If you want to succeed, you got to do it. And if you want at the end of the day to smile and go to bed easy and just carefree, you got to do it. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for leaving the reviews. And I really do appreciate your nice, positive comments. And for other people out there, uh, if you do have suggestions for the show, guys, we're all open. We're all ears. Um, but we, uh, you definitely get more bees with honey. So anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Hey.